Currently, I'm on a mission to test out some brand new Gothenburg Block Builder plugins and see what they have to offer. Here's what I'm looking for. First, they need to have a free version. Second, they should be super easy to use. And third one, they must have a sleek and user-friendly interface. Uh, in this video, I'll be testing the first plugin on my list. So let's dive right in and see what it can do for us. The plugin we're going to use today is called Zoloblox, the one you see on the screen right now. It's a brand new plugin, as you see. Currently it has 20 plus active installations and four five star ratings. This is the free version. They also have a pro version. At the moment they have a 45% discount for all the plans, but if you watch this video later, then take a look at the description of this video because there is a nice 70% discount coupon for you. Just follow the link and you're good to go. But now let's take a look whether this plugin is any good. So after installing the plugin, you'll see the Zolo blocks menu on the left here. Just click on it. And next you'll see there is a welcome screen. There is a block screen, API settings screen and settings screen. Let's take a look at the settings first. First, you can set the default container with, I suggest you to take a look at your theme settings. For example, I'm using the Bloxy theme and my site width is 1390 pixels. So I'm going to set the same width here. If you would like to enable the SVG upload, then you can do it here. And there is also an enable smooth scroller option. As you see, it's a pro version. Zoloblox also offers a pro version, the one you see on the screen at the moment. If we take a look at the pricing, then you'll see that at the moment license for one website is $49, for 10 websites is $69, and for 1000 websites it's $149 per year. There is also a lifetime plan, and these are the prices for different plans. This is a pro version, but let's go back to the free version. At the moment there is nothing else to configure here, so let's take a look at the API settings. If you would like to integrate your site with Google Map and you have a Google Map API key, then just add it here. The same goes with Google Recapture and MailChimp. Just add your MailChimp key and audience ID. And for the Recapture, it's site key and secret key. Under the blocks, you can activate or deactivate the blocks based on your needs. For example, I don't use Form, I can deactivate it. I don't use Google Map, I, I can deactivate it. Or... I can deactivate them all and based on the category I can activate the ones I would like to use. At the moment I'm going to activate all of those here because I would like to show you what is what. Currently there are 30 different blocks here. Container, accordion, advanced button, heading, icon box, advanced image, brand grid and so on and so forth. Instead of just displaying those here let's go to the pages and let's see what happens here. I'm going to open up my home page. It's a blank at the moment, which means I need to add some blocks. So if I click on this plus icon, you'll see the Zolo blocks here. All the ones I mentioned before are displayed here. If you previously deactivate any of those, then those are not displayed. Let's start with a container block. As you see, you can select the container column layout. Let's choose two column layout, this one here. Now, as usual, with all the Blocks plugin, on the right, you'll see all the options here. And Zoloblox offers you different container width. You can set the minimum height based on your device size. And it also has a flex properties built in. Under the style, you can set the gaps between columns. And there is a extra menu. You can set the margins, paddings, Z index, overflow. You can add custom CSS ID or CSS classes here. I can also add a background for the normal status and the hover status background type, whether it's classic or gradient. And I can also add a image. So let's start with the image. I'm gonna select this one. Doesn't look good. So I'm gonna set the minimum height to 500 pixels. Next, I can choose the image position. Let's set it to center. Attachment, whether it's scroll or fixed, whether to repeat it, and size, I'm gonna set it to cover. If I would like to add the overlay, then just enable it here, add it as a image overlay or color overlay, for example, this one here, some transparency if needed, 
but I'm not going to do that. Now what else do we have under the extra options for the container is we have a custom CSS which is a good way to add your own styling using the CSS here. Under the responsive control you can choose whether to hide it on the desktop, on a tablet or on mobile. Under the transform there is a option to add transform options but most of those are available for the pro license which means it's time to move to the next block. Before I proceed with the video, don't forget to smash that like button down below here. It means a lot to me and it also helps my channel. So I would appreciate your help. Next let's add a heading here. For example this one here. Let's rewrite it and let's make it white so you can see what is happening here. Okay, so heading. We have three presets. Preset 1, preset 2, preset 3. So this is 3. This is two, and this is one. You can enable a heading link. You can display subheading. This one here. Let's make the subheading also white so you can see it. Okay. Back to the basics. You can display the separator, and you can display the transparent heading. At the moment you don't see it, but I'm going to show you what will it do for you. So let's scroll down. Transparent heading, and... Let's choose the color, for example, this one here. Let's scroll down and set the opacity. And as you see, this is your transparent heading. You can set it as you like using these options here. Okay, now let's go to the basic once again. Let's open up presets and I'm going to choose a preset number three. You'll see that there is a different background here which means if I open up the heading, you'll see that the background image has been used here. Let's change it. For example, let's choose this one. Under the typography, I'm going to make a heading a bit bigger. I can change the text stroke here as I like. For example, let's do something like this. And once again, you can customize it as you like. Now, just to keep it short, I'm not going to go over all the settings, just I'm going to show you this or that here. Okay, let's add another heading here. Let's add some text. And as you see, if I click here and open up additional options, there is a copy styles and paste styles option. So copy styles, paste styles and done. There you go. Let's delete those and let's see what happens next. For example, let's add brand grid down below here. This one. If you hover there is information. Once again, there are some presets, two presets for free version and one for pro version. Next one, let's test advanced icon box. This one here, you can display the ribbon. Ribbon is the one you see here popular. You can change the text or disable it. Whether to display the icon, heading, description, button, show button icon and use link as global. Content alignment options. If you would like to add animations, then this is a pro option. Under the content, you can change the content, add the links, add the icon. And as before, there are three presets here. Style 1, this is style 2, and style 3. This one here. There is also an option to choose the image position, whether it's right and left. Okay, next one. There is a advanced image block. Let's select this image, for example. What's nice about it is that this block has mask options. And there are a bunch of those here for you to choose. Just choose the one you like and make your site look a bit more different than the other ones. Awesome, isn't it? Okay, next one. What I like is image gallery. Let's change the images. So add to gallery. Let's add some images. And done. Now you can choose whether to enable the photo light box, photo captions, you can choose the thumbnail resolution, some grid options, how many columns, for example, if you would like to have four columns, you can do it here. Some light box settings under the style, you can set the border radius to zero, change the light box icon, and so on and so forth. If I update it and take a look at the site itself, then I'll see that it opens up in a nice light box. And there are also thumbnails down below here, which makes the navigation much easier. 
Great. Next one for us to discuss. There is a flick box. This one here. Image comparison. Let's add an image. For example, let's add this one and this one here. You can see the preview. You can dis display the labels. Disable slide behavior. You can activate only handle to be draggable or slide on hover. And the initial position, how many percent you would like it to be visible for this or that image. Also, you can change the direction, whether it's horizontal or vertical. Now I'm going to delete th this one here and add another one. For example, if you would like to display posts on your site, then there is a post carousel, post grid and post list block. On top, there is a preview for you. But let's add a post list, for example, this one. First post and other posts down below. Preset 1, preset 2, preset 3. Whether to display the excerpt, display reading time, show pagination, and then you'll have a bunch of customization options also. You can choose what is the source, whether it's post pages, products, or whatever it is. This can be done under the query option. Next one, let's take a look at the post screed. Basically the same, couple of presets for you. Just choose the one you like the most. Currently I like the style 2 the most. And the same options, whether to display this or that, read more button, grid, styling, query options, and so on. As you see, there are a bunch of good blocks for you to use. For example, tabs. Let's take a look at the tabs. Tab 1, 2, tab 3. Whether it's vertical or horizontal. And since it's block based, you can add whatever you would like to add here. For example, let's drag this gallery inside this tab. Inside this tab, let's add a slider. And inside this tab, let's add just a regular text. Update it. Let's preview it. And done. Awesome. Now, since we're already talking about the sliders, I'm going to delete this one and let's take a look at the slider. If you would like to use slides on your site, then take a look at this one here. Setting this up is easy. Slider height, content max width. Slider options, whether it's infinite loop or autoplay, navigation, pagination, effects, slide, fade, cube. Let's activate the cube. If you would like to add more slides, then there is a plus icon here. If you would like to change the slide content, then click inside the slide itself. Select the slide block. Let's add a background, for example. Let's choose this image here. Boom, done. Now, what I would like to point out is that since it's a block-based slider, you, you can add any blocks here. For example, let's add something after here. For example, button. Add some text. Align it in the middle. Choose some styling. Maybe let's add some text also here. Align it in the center. Select slide. Change the background, this one here. Let's update it and let's see how does it look like. Slide one, slide two, and this way you can add whatever you would like to add inside this slider as a block. Okay, this was my brief overview of the Zolo blocks. In order to keep it short, I'm not gonna go through all the blocks here, but as you saw, out of the box it works well. It's easy to use, it has responsive options and a bunch of cool blocks for every site. And what's especially good is that you can only activate these blocks you actually use and you deactivate the other ones. Which makes the user interface much cleaner and it doesn't load unnecessary blocks. Now I like free stuff as any other guy and therefore I have made another cool video about top 7 Chrome extensions for WordPress. If you would like to know how can they help you then take a look at the screen right now because there is a video I made about it. In the meantime, take care.